a new segment that I'm going to be doing on every Wednesday evening, which is called The Normal Island. And what we're going to be doing is checking through some of the more reasonable and normal things that are happening in this very, very regular uh, and not at all extraordinary place, which is the UK. Um, and the first thing I wanted to start with, which is, quite frankly, one of the funniest things I think I've seen all year, which has gone incredibly viral. It's now got 10 million views just on Twitter alone. Uh, and it is from, it's an interview on talk radio. This is um, someone called Mike Graham uh, and Cameron Ford, who is a member of Insulate Britain, uh, being interviewed. And you have to see it to believe it. If you've not seen it, you're in for a fucking treat. Let's go. It's muted. Let me unmute the site. Morning, Mike. Oh, hello. What are you glued to, Cameron? Uh, just your screen, unfortunately. Unfortunately? What do you do for a living, well, Cameron? I'm a carpenter. A carpenter, right. So how safe is that for the climate? Well, I work with timber, which is a much more sustainable material rather than concrete. I also but you work, work with bit. trees that have been cut down then, don't you? It's a sustainable building practice. How is it sustainable if you're killing trees? Because it's regenerative, you can grow trees. Right. Well, you can you can grow all sorts of things, can't you? Well, you can't grow concrete. You can. See you, Cameron. Cheerio. That was Cameron. Uh, he grows trees and then cuts them down and then makes things from them. Like, the, the, my favourite thing about this is at the end, where he says, where he says, oh, he cut trees, cuts trees down and then grows them and then makes things out of them as if that's some kind of own, as if, as if this valuable you know, societal skill this man possesses and has as part, the part of his vocation is somehow something that he can use as, as a, some way of bashing him. It's crazy as well in the, the talk radio people who posted this clip they think it makes them look. They think it makes the Insulate Britain guy look bad. Like we're gonna talk about Insulate Britain after this a little bit more. Like, don't don't get me wrong, right? But like, they, how on earth can you look at that and think that Mike Graham came out not looking like a massive twat? And what? How? How are they? I, 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 it's inexplicable to me. Like, if you check the rest of the thread on here, it says ha, watch more Insulate Britain fails on YouTube. This isn't a fail of insulate. This is you. You said you could grow concrete. I it, the, the like the silence was absolutely perfect. Like the stony silence, the the tiniest, the tiniest little smirk. Like this, it was. Where's the tiny little smirk? It's right. That that little that little smirk right there. Absolutely perfect. What absolute king this man is. That's true. Like I have loads of things to say about insulate Britain, but watching all of the like rhythoids get triggered by them it's it does warm the cockles of my heart it really does but i do have issues with the optics of what they engage in which i said i will cover later on in this particular segment but it's just i love how they and they got absolutely fucking ratioed in the comments i mean they we got 20k likes probably ironic likes but they're being absolutely shit talked in the comments absolutely hilarious it doesn't seem to be working have i got the position right does it need more water or does it just go to this in winter <laughs> put a block of concrete in a plant pot <laughs> and then they, they even like the cope the absolute level, like the like the hypercopian they're engaging in, it's like, ha, living concrete can be made from bacteria to create replicating bricks. I don't think that's what he was talking about in that clip. I don't think he was understood like this incredibly niche, like non non marketable, non commercial uh, <laughs> test ability that they was like a test practice they've got to make living concrete. <laughs> oh dear. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> like I mean, to be fair to them, they're riding the waves of this. They are riding the waves of the traction they're getting, and you know, you know, what they say any publicity is good publicity. Look what happened to the BNP after they got platformed on Question Time, right? But my god, like if you ever needed an idea that people that like fucking the gammonry are just like completely like 
complete disabuse from reality, like these people who just speak incredibly confidently on something they clearly know nothing about. I, mean, I know I do that myself, but it's even funnier when it comes from these people because I, I don't know much. I'm not a particularly learned person, but I definitely know more than Mike Graham. Like I'm definitely smarter than him. Like at least at least somewhat. Like you have to. I I I feel I feel reason to be happy saying that, despite the fact that I'm a pretty ignorant person overall. Like it's it's unreal to me. And like like. I mean, as I said, like someone say, saying you chose to further amplify this interview, thus humiliating the host further. Again, we live in the attention economy, and you need like viral reach to become popular in this world. And as I mentioned before, like any publicity is good publicity, even if it makes you look like an absolute pillock. Because again, people don't really care about whether it's bad or good. There's a really good video by JXE about these life hack channels that are, that are deliberately awful because that's what generates view count. Because at the end of the day, that's all they care about. They don't care about whether they're right or whether they're good or whether they provide any kind of functional service. All they care about is getting eyes on uh, getting eyes on the screen and getting the views because that's what makes them the money, right? But even so, like, the levels of cope is just... It's just completely wild. Like, the, the, the cope... The cope, like... Goes Death even further. Has gone nuts. It really has. Our boss has been hauled over the coals yeah. quite brilliantly, as he always does. This yeah. is not just an opinion. Yeah. I mean, this is this is Morgan-esque. Yeah. This is, this well, is... not so an opinion. It's factually incorrect. That concrete grows. You are allowed to have factual bases and empirical evidence for something. Someone making like like a descriptive statement. Of course it's Jeremy. Of course it's Jeremy fucking Kyle, the guy who literally just humiliated working class people on his show on ICV two for fucking years until somebody fucking killed themselves. Like that piece has a, a job in the media after that is astonishing to me. It's crazy to me. But I can, anyway, I digress. You say it's just an opinion. It's actually a fact, you know. Because the thing about what I do and what you do, Jeremy, is mm. that words are something that we use Isn't as it an called everyday theater of the mind, as an everyday radio. currency. Yeah, yeah. Words I yeah. know are my currency, and yes. so therefore I'm very careful about which words yeah. I use and yeah. what I say. Hmm. Now, if you were to say to me, you know, what do you call something that gets bigger? What would you say? Well, I wouldn't... This is completely obfuscatory in the context. The context of the original clip was the fact that it's regenerative, not the fact that it expands. Trees grow to create... Like, they don't... They, don't, they, they generate... They turn like nutrients in the ground and some like the red synthesis into additional more into additional tree. They don't expand and contract like concrete does when you apply heat. I'm just gonna lose I'm losing, I'm losing my mind. This is incredible. I wouldn't be able to say it at five well, past six, but I would have thought the concrete it would be something that grows. For expands. Example. It expands. It grows. Uh, right? I know, I know. Uh the foam. Foam thing that foam the... things expand. Right. Now if you were to say for example describe the economy growing would that be something that you would say had to be planted? No, no, it would expand because of Turner. Ah, I'm losing my mind. <laughs> but like, there's no extra material when it expands due to heat or whatever like that. Like, we'll say, oh, well, you don't have to, you don't have to plant the economy to make it grow. The economy is an ephemeral, like. Like a concept based upon a, a you know a not enclosed system, it's it's not the same as planting a tree. I can't believe these people are just so like they're just brain dead. They're just really really stupid, and I feel and I feel confident in telling these people they're stupid, despite from my not very lofty position to begin with. Right. Raw money. Yes, yes, but it would expand and grow because yeah. you have growth in the economy. You don't actually plant the economy <laughs> in order to make it grow. No. So similarly. All of these sort of lefty... But then just, there's more money in the economy if it's growing. It is increased in what... It is increased in the level to which that it has um, currency and capital within it to be able to grow and expand as more things get produced and things get more efficient. That's what economy means when it grows. The economy is not regenerative in the same way that a physical manifestation of something is. Like... I'm just, I'm losing my mind. Idiots, because funnily enough, it's all the lefties who have now contributed to a huge amount of money uh, for this organisation. Thank you very much indeed, guys. 3.2 million people at last count have <laughs> viewed this. Hits. Right, it's well all good. Done, son. Listen, I only wish I had your agent who would have negotiated a I'll, pound, I'll negotiate a for pound you per view for <laughs> me. Right? For you, Mike what, Smoke. <laughs> what is the thermal expansion constant of the economy? And what is the expected signal yield? <laughs>
<laughs> oh, I love that. That's brilliant. <laughs> Three mil That's on what I want. Tea. That's what I want. Right. But so they're all going, he's so stupid, he doesn't know that concrete doesn't grow. I mean, do they really think that? They actually think it expands. That. Well, if you have ever seen somebody making concrete in a concrete mixer, yeah. I don't know whether you've ever watched anyone you doing that. Yeah. But you exciting, basically put, you know, sand in, you put water in, yeah. you know, yeah. cement goes in, yeah. you know, you make concrete, it expands, it grows. Yeah. So you can actually No, it's expanding, it's not increasing in it's not increasing in mass. It's changing. It's it's physical. It's it's dimensions are changing. The level of mass isn't changing. And the person who is make if you're putting the constituent ingredients together to make concrete, that involves labor and involves additional material and expanded energy. If you plant a tree, it just grows out of the fucking ground. It uses nutrients from the soil, which again is regenerative, and energy from the sun, which is a massive nuclear power station that is going to continue to be burning for the next five billion years. What I, on, a, on a personal level, what yeah. I found really interesting was, was that they started sort of saying you're an idiot. Mm. Then they said this is a conspiracy to get more listeners, yes. whilst they continued to send their messages Indeed. and listen to the radio station. Yes. And then perhaps most interestingly mm. of all, they took on the angle of, you know, you humiliated the man. Who, could I just point out, 12 seconds into that call, yes. said, I'm looking at your stupid, ridiculous face yes. or whatever he Unfortunately, said. Unfortunately, yes. Unfortunately. So yeah. that in itself was... Right. He did it. He literally just said, I'm glued to your screen, unfortunately. Which, <laughs> like, he didn't say anything about the guy's face. It's just they just they they just they're just lying like just talk, like rightoids just lie they just lie nowadays that's all they do. Was it also, I'm not even sure he is a carpenter. Well, it, I mean, these people say they're carpenters. Well, We've had people well, saying they're joiners. Was Joseph a carpenter? Nobody Joseph, knows. Well, he was, but he wasn't. That wasn't all he was, was it? And I mean, I no, suspect I think Joseph was playing around. Wasn't Cameron, he? I mean, if he is a carpenter yes. uh, and he builds things from wood, but claims that they are indeed somehow sustainable. You'll be waiting a long time for another tree that you just planted to make a bookcase. It's an ongoing it's an ongoing process. If you, for example, have a twenty year period of carpentry in which you cut down enough trees to make the level of carpentry twenty years ago, twenty years later there will be a certain amount of tree growth that's happened over the course of that time. It rolls over, it continue it's a continuous like process. You don't just the, the people that they didn't just 20 years ago go right all the trees are cut down there's now no more trees we have to wait until the trees have grown again before we either end up cutting down any more trees that's not how this works it's not how this works it's be about 100 years <laughs> would you right would you gonna go home and worry about this tonight no not no. at all in fact better than that uh, i've already put out uh, uh, the message to my millions of listeners that in fact i'm going to be doing some more concrete tomorrow because we're going to get a concrete expert on uh, who's going to be telling me exactly how you can make concrete you're not going to believe this but my brother-in-law yeah. sells concrete <laughs> i'm honestly i i swear it's literally just like two guys in the pub going well all these people who say things that are obvious they're all wrong and i'm definitely right i'm just like for fuck's sake like <laughs> like just because you're fucking boomers doesn't mean you're correct to everything like they take it's like oh if someone's criticizing me they're the one that's wrong and i'm just like like i at least have the you know the like the or that like the reason i'm reasonable enough to admit when i've just made said a stupid thing but it's just like doubling down so hard like like the fucking child would like with just like chocolate smeared all over his face have you been have you been eating the biscuits I'm like no no i've not no i'm not me eating biscuits no i've not done it also that chocolate no it's just it's, it's expanding it's expanding cement on my face if it looks like and tastes taste and smells like chocolate no no it's just concrete concrete can smell like and look like chocolate i'm like what the fuck what the fuck what's we what even's going on Swear to God, this Does he, is true. Is I am the business not... growing? Dave, I promise you, Greg Burton is right. he, he, Signa, Sig, Sig, Seema. I don't even know. I'm going to find out in the next right. break. Is My brother-in-law. Is, is it a growth business? I don't know, but you could get him on. Yeah. He's just had a hip Let's replacement at 38. Greg, Greg, call me. Because yeah. he, he sells concrete. Brilliant. And I've always said to him, this is brilliant. This yeah. is absolutely dry. I said to him, what do you do? I sell concrete. Yeah. I've also been accused of being a secret supporter of incident. They're just nattering about fuck all. Like Britain. Because you, uh, uh, the, some have said that I've actually given their cause the biggest boost it's ever had. He does had. work for. Right? 
Seeker, he works for Seeker, Seeker Concrete. There it's are. like a bad Seeker. podcast. Right, we're going to get, we're gonna we'll get, get Greg on. Burton on. We're so, you know, I think on. we've touched a vein of, of, of information Why here. do people get so wound up? Well, isn't it strange? I They're think not they wound up. They're laughing at you. They're laughing at you for being a fucking moron. Like, you've literally gone viral because... You've literally made a massive fool of yourself on the internet, and you're just so like pig headed and completely fucking like divorced from reality that you're just like going on, what I've, I've, I've triggered all the snowflakes today. I'm like, you've not done anything, you've just made a fucking massive tit of yourself on the internet forever. That clip's never going away, it's there forever. You can't just delete it from the internet, it's, it's you, you, you have to live with that. He's gonna be the guy, he's gonna be concrete Mike forever. No one's ever gonna forget. Like Britain during yeah. the break, it, to, to, to my credit, because you're such a blimmin' brilliant man, I yes. was, I'm a bit in awe of you. Yes, really, to be are honest. you? Really? Well, I told you, Insulate Britain, mm. I got right on one today, yeah. right? They announced today, could you please, we're going to start again tomorrow, mm. and could you please all adhere to a 20 mile an hour speed limit? Yeah. No, sod off. Or don't off. use the M25. Or, or Hello. even better, do you know why they've been off for two weeks? I just told him this during the break. Because they've been on half term. Half term holiday. That's not a protester, that's a... No. They're going to have to do something proper with these people soon, because... As you see, the advanced intellect of the Jeremy Kyle there, that's not a protester, that's a... Bleh. Okay, cool. Well, as long as we're describing people as noises, I would describe you, Jeremy, as a... Bleh. Bleh. That's how I describe you, <laughs> right? Is this the level of, like... Is this the level of descriptors that we're going for? I don't think it's worth watching the rest of that nonsense. But... I yes, said the level of copium is just like it's off the fucking charts. It's just, it's just like fucking in the stratosphere. Like the level of cope here, it's absolutely fucking wild. And they did, they did get on the concrete expert who said, "Well, in this very tiny corner case, actually, fuck it. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to watch it now. Now, I, now I need to find out whether concrete actually does grow." Where's the clip? Where's the clip? Oh, let's all talk about the budget. That's what I was going to do later on. This one, fucking yeah, you can grow concrete. This is the actual, this, this is the clip. North Carolina, who has uh, had this dream of, of growing cement since she was about eight years old, because one of the things that cement does do uh, is it creates, because of the amount of energy used to actually fire up a kiln, uh, industrially speaking, it uses an awful lot of CO2, and it's actually incredibly polluting to the atmosphere and to, uh, and to global warming and climate change and all of that. So she's come up with an idea, having been inspired by a seashell, because she looked at the seashell and thought, well, this has grown under underwater and it's very, very hard and it's very, very, uh, you know, sort of um, hard wearing as well and durable. And she thought there must be a way. And she's the woman who's trying to make bacteria grow into cement. And, and she's got this great idea, which which could in time uh, become the way forward, couldn't it? I think in time and with money, and that's my big frustration with this whole discussion. We've got the seeds of so many brilliant ideas that could help us tackle climate change with, with, with what I call a sort of sense of net luxury. Mm. Yeah, we could insulate our homes better. We could be build better houses, have mm. cleaner, better transport. We could do so many things without, you know, seriously affecting people's quality of life. And I think that's a very difficult sell to people. If we'd taken the steps a bit earlier and invested in these things, mm. these seeds of ideas, invested in that eight-year-old who's got a brilliant idea to grow concrete grow cement yeah and it, the, we, the challenge is to do these things now you know the, the second best time to do them if we didn't do them 20 just just tell me if you can grow concrete just tell me i want to know i want to know i want to know if you can grow the concrete fucking the revelation like we'd solved everything if you can just grow it to plant the concrete seeds years ago is now and mm. i'd love to see whether we'll see it this afternoon, I don't know, but I'd love to see, you know, a, a much more significant, you know, moonshot project scale investment in, you know, in, in tackling these issues in ways that are innovative, are interesting, uh, and actually you, you can sell to the public. Yeah, well, I, you know, my next step in this travelling uh, uh, sort of a journey that I'm on uh, with growing concrete is to grow some concrete and, and film myself doing it, and I think that'll be the next stage. Because I've also seen, I was given this by uh, an expert in concrete saying this, when it first dries concrete shrinks and undergoes structural alterations that make some of the shrinkage irreversible however concrete does indeed expand and grow when it gets hot or when the moisture content changes and that is it's the, the, the mass hasn't changed it's the dimensions that have changed not the mass when a tree grows you get more tree I'm going to lose my mind I'm going to lose my mind 
I'm going to lose my fucking mind. It's going to go. It's going to jump out the window that is open. Why you need expansion joints in bridges, buildings and other structures. Uh, this is one of the you know one of the, the big challenges we're going to face if, you know, as the climate does start to change as we get more heat waves and things like that actually a lot of our building infrastructure isn't designed to cope it doesn't necessarily have those expansion joints of the right scale uh, in order to cope with with the heat damage we're going to get and yeah maybe perhaps not so much in the uk but other parts of europe you know we're going to see a lot of infrastructure really starting to struggle and again mm. we're going to need innovative solutions to that i'd love to see more investment in science and technology and that yes i agree we need some innovative solutions absolutely there will definitely be people out there trying to find loads of different solutions to the climate crisis. Brilliant. Fine. Love it. But, but we can just insulate, we can just go ahead and do that. We can insulate homes. We can, we can, you know, make cars more environmentally friendly. We can invest in clean and public transport that is cheaper and more efficient. We can just do that. And we're not doing it. We're not doing it. We can just do that as well as innovating on the other side as well we can walk and chew gum at the same time unfortunately this is just a, like a concept that's just alien to so many people on all sides of the political spectrum actually taking those those like those brilliant ideas those innovative eight-year-olds maybe slightly older than that but turning them into reality more quickly because we need those real solutions that's just an eight-year-old who planted a seashell yes so finally tom i really much appreciate you coming on uh, just a yes or no answer can you grow concrete yes thank you Thank you, Slowly. Tom. Well done. <laughs> well done. And thank you to all the... How? Videos. Tell me how. ...watch the video, particularly uh, the 7.9 million of you who think that I'm an idiot. Because it turns out I was right after all. Extraordinary times we live in. You can grow concrete. You no, no, you are very stupid, Mike. And the internet knows it, and they're never going to forget it. And he's just so completely like divorce from reality, he doesn't even, he doesn't, he doesn't even notice it either. Incredible. Incredible. Anyway... That's what I was, that is that is this saga of Mike of concrete Mike and the expanding concrete expanding not growing <laughs> expanding concrete heaven for fend heaven for fend which was again as I said it was originally with an interview with a guy from Insulate Britain now if people don't know who Insulate Britain are they are a uh, protest pressure group movement type thing. Uh, with regards to wanting more housing insulation, wanting more um, government resources being used to tackle climate change. Wonderful, noble goal. They are, however, unfortunately... They are, however, unfortunately, incredibly hilarious. Now, I think I found the video of this. Let me find it on... I think I've got it in my links here. Uh, da, 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 da. Let me find the, the clip I'm looking for. This was the one. This was the guy. There's a picture of him. There's a picture I put on the on the on the link to the on the link to the stream. So anyway, to 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 to, to bring us all up to speed. What In Shape Britain have been doing as a protest to be able to draw attention to their cause, which clearly after the events of as after the events of yesterday, clearly they have drawn plenty of attention to their cause at this point, uh, is by blocking roads with In Shape Britain banners to try and make people uh, to try and inconvenience people into thinking about the climate. Now, obviously, protest in its nature has to inconvenience people, otherwise you'll never get noticed. Like I understand that, like. However, the people who are responsible for climate change, the people who are responsible for being able to have large programs available to insulate homes and to make our economy more carbon, more carbon neutral, carbon effective, right? This is the government and large corporations, right? Not, you know, you know, Lucy and her boyfriend taking the kids to school on a Tuesday afternoon. So. What they've done is made themselves the enemy of everybody, and everybody, they, literally everybody dislikes them. Like, there was a guy, like, he went up the, the protestants, sprayed ink all over them, there was this woman who shouted, tried to almost ran them over. They are making, they are clearly, they've clearly become public enemy number one. I have seen people online advocating for these people to be run over. Like, that's, that's, the, like, literally, they hate them so much they want them dead. That's how much people hate them. 
I'm like, if you were really looking to inconvenience people who had, like, the ability with which to affect the difference in climate change, sure you'd be protesting against the government and against these large corporations rather than regular people. And things have reached an incredibly surreal nadir at this point, where, unfortunately, people have been gluing themselves to the road. What the fuck? Why have your why are you gluing yourself to the road? It, it, this isn't this 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 isn't making anybody's life better. All you're doing is gonna you're gonna loot your a, a large chunk of skin of yours is going to end up on asphalt. On I mean, to be fair, you maybe it all maybe the concrete in the road will combine with your face to somehow grow like a second version of you in this mythical concrete growing universe that we live in, right? Maybe, maybe that's gonna work. I don't have great confidence in that, and all and you're making you're making yourself look like an idiot. You're making everybody hate you, and you're being completely ineffective at getting to, getting your goals put into practice. A road rash decision, like because th at the heart of it, Inuit Britain are entirely correct in everything they're saying. They're entirely correct. They're completely correct. Just the methods of which they're doing so is, first of all, very very funny. Someone who has their where's the where's the picture of the guy with the face glued to the um see literally this this is this guy here in the middle there he's literally glued his face to the road like with the side the cheek sideways down why what are you doing let me try and find let me try and find a video on Twitter. Look at look at this! Look at this! Was totally glued, right? But now I've worked most of that off, but the hair is still stuck. So I'm so with these scissors, I'm just trying to cut the hair. <laughs> he was still able to glue himself. The are you, are you um, yeah, it's it's not one of my better moves. <laughs> yes. No fucking shit. But no shit, mate. Sort of make a statement that things are fairly. Critical. Yes. And so I was wanting to have an extreme action to reflect the extreme nature of the um, of the emergency that we're facing. But my face was totally glued. This is. I. It's. You're getting yourself nowhere, and you're just making yourself look silly. Like the sad. The, the sad part is that it's genuinely, really heartwarming. To see that the most, the vast majority of this Inshalate Britain movement is full of the older generation and who want to pass on a better world to their kids, like that's really heartwarming because I'm used to boomers literally just destroying the planet for profit and hating everything we say and do and not giving a shit about the lives that the, the, the world that, they, that we have to inherit. And so that's really heartwarming seeing a bunch of priests and older people coming to, saying, "Well, we want to pass on a better world to our kids." I think that's really nice, and it gets overshadowed by numpties like this fucker gluing themselves. They're going to face to the road. Why? I want to do an extreme thing. Well, you've that you've extremely you've made an extreme mockery of yourself. That's what you've done. There's another video here. That's a hand. I guess there must be a syringe full of um acetate. It won't come off. It's not coming off. See, it's it's it is it is undermining the point they're trying to get across when the narrative isn't what's climate happening, what climate change, what what's happening with regards to climate change initiatives to try and make the world a better place. All it is is just videos of people glued to roads and people getting run over and then message then tweets from people saying they want to murder these people. Like it's whereas remember when Extinction Rebellion they they smashed up like Lloyd's and Barclays or whatever. There were some people saying, oh, we can't have people inflicting property damage, even on banks. Oh, how uncouth. Which Again, there's very few people saying that. But when it comes to actually inconveniencing just regular or ordinary working folk who have very, very little to do with the ongoing climate change issue, right? These aren't these aren't the people who are directly responsible for the issues of climate change. You're just making enemies for yourself. Like 
to be able to push for these kind of policies to be put forward by a government, you need popular support. That's how representative democracy works. And you're not going to get it by li making the literal, the entirety of the country either hate you or think you're an idiot. So it's not really good practice. Although I did see a interview on Good Morning, Brit good morning Britain with Richard Madeley, which... Let me just have a look at here, this one. Mm -mm. Which Darren Grimes has very charitably titled as Insulate Britain's Spokesperson Losing Her Marbles at Rich Richard Madeley Off Air. Or that, oh, that's the other one, isn't it? I'm looking at... This is the one. This is the one I want. Having a stroke in a car. Do you, do you feel if it had been your mother, would you still have done... If you'd known that your mother was having a stroke in a car 50 yards behind the blockage, would you have carried on? Would you have stopped to get into hospital? Please, anybody, if you know someone having a stroke, phone an ambulance, right? That's the responsible method. No, but that, an ambulance couldn't get to I thought her. you were going to let me finish. No, right? but you're I, not, I, I, I would I like to answer you, Richard. You answer no, the question. About my mum, I'm going to, you know. Right, OK. So phone an ambulance, that's responsible messaging. If it was my mum, of course, at the time, I would be furious and heartbroken. But when you then go home, we lift, have to look at the reality. Three to four years to save the future of humanity. Do you know what that means so for my children? So you allow your own mother to have a, a, a near-fatal stroke? Three to four years before my kids face an unimaginable You're future, Richard. Question, are you? Well, that's the problem is, is that the issue is, especially with fucking liberals, is everything is atomised into these individual bits and pieces and we get caught up in semantic arguments about random corner cases rather than looking at the actual structural reality of what's going on. Because she's completely right. Like... You know, like, if there's an ambulance coming through, these people would clearly get out of the way. Although if you're glued to the road, I'm not sure how well you'd do with that. Um, but it's like, well, in this theoretical situation where you might kill some woman who needs to get to the hospital, but you're blocking the road. Like, sure, we can in this very, very minor specific instance, this is bad. Like the actual, you know. That there is no utility in doing so. Like he is, that's true. Like we are just going through all of the um, all of the Alan Partridge people, all of the Alan Partridge boomers in all of this cycle. Here. All these all these Alan Partridge people who are just have, they're just unironic people who just act like Alan Partridge on the in on internet and on the TV for money. They just make an embarrassment of themselves. It's literally just like the um, who invented the skip? Who invented the skip, Darren? Who invented the skip? Just continually over and over again. Yeah, it is, a, and it, it is exactly it is a trolley problem. Again, you just have to look at the, the the utility that you gain from the actions that you make, right? I again, I think there is negative utility into into them demonising their movement by the way they're doing it. Although clearly, they've been in disruptive enough that it's become so well known that you know they're getting interviews on TV, they're getting Mike Graham to say that you can grow fucking concrete. So they've got themselves a platform, but they would. You'd... It's difficult. It's difficult to think about. Yeah, how many people have died today to save humanity? Well, I mean, people always kind of denigrate the idea of utilitarianism by saying, well, that means that if you could kill a person to save three people, you would. And I'd be like, yes, that's how governments work. That's what they should, I guess, do when they're looking at governmental policy and say, well, if we do this policy or another, what's the net, le what's the net loss of life that could theoretically happen with regards to these different policies. For example, you look at COVID policy and you say, well, how many people are going to kill themselves because depression's been influenced by the lockdown versus how many lives are we saving by making sure people don't go outside and the virus infects everybody at the same time? You're making decisions based on marginal utility at that point, regardless. And people try and poo-poo that and saying, try and atomize it down to these really individual situations and going, what about this theoretical pre what about this theoretical mum having a stroke rather than the big picture of the structural reality? Exactly. Well, we are both utilitarians. We both believe in the marginal utility of killing fewer people, right? But I understand that other people have different you know, ethical philosophies in this regard. But that's the problem. Like, this is why I find it very frustrating that people, like, denigrate the idea of debate bros on the internet. Like, if this woman on the right-hand side here, if she just was an, a, able to have just some level of rhetorical skill, she'd be able to overcome what Richard is saying here. But she's looking weak here because she's not answering the question. Whereas what she should be doing is saying, well, I don't think this question is very, very relevant when we're talking about something very hypothetical and very atomized. When we, we both know that the issue of the climate is something that affects everybody in one go. It's difficult to visualize because it's we live in the world. We live it, it but when you describe the world, it's something that's ever present rather than something that we can individualize or atomize. So it's difficult for us to be able to comprehend that. 
Whereas you have to comp- you have to counteract that by saying when he's saying right now is saying you're not answering the question you have to give an answer that then poses a question back to frame it in the way that you want to which she's just not doing she's just ignoring the question which makes you look weak rhetorically and you're not asking the right question three to well, four that's my years decision, to be honest with you. okay well, because you're heartless or too that. scared to look at the reality of our situation i'm genuinely okay. perplexed why journalists are not asking the right questions here if do you know your... what a two degree world looks like a 95 percent chance of a two degree world mm. for our children do you know what that looks like you mentioned your children i mean what you're doing why can't is we talk about well, then again, he's, then again, then he does the same thing back where he doesn't answer the question either. He just he then deflects and pivots away to another particular topic, which again, if she was rhetorically strong in this case, she could just say, you know, you're, you're pivoting here. You're pivoting away from what I'm asking you about the theoretical damage that could be done by not changing our response to the climate crisis, which is a, a question that people should be asking. And she's right in saying that journalists aren't taking proper precautions or taking the proper steps to be able to question this narrative in the correct and effective manner because they're not speaking truth to power they are they are playing defense for the massive corporations that are destroying the planet but she hasn't got a leg to stand on when she's not critiquing these when she's not critiquing these institutions and is instead just inconveniencing people in their daily life right so there are lessons to be learned from this uh, in the way in which people go about protest and the way in which people go about putting forward their ideas when they get invited on these shows. Clearly, the Cameron method of when somebody says something incredibly stupid, you just sit there in silence and make let them make an idiot of themselves by saying you can grow concrete. So I have my misgivings within Chile Britain, but we did get some incredibly funny moments from that, which is good, which is good. So the other incredibly normal thing that was happening for a very long time was not the funny kind of not normal was the uh, abhorrent kind of not normal which was this video that we all saw on our timelines i can only assume released into Langs which is a harbor in hampshire was it yeah langstone harbor in hampshire having raw sewage pumped into it for 49 hours because private companies are bad at managing utilities because they have no fiduciary responsibility to the environment that we live in. They only have fiduciary responsibilities to their, to their shareholders. Uh, and treating sewage is expensive, but dumping it is very, very cheap. And then there was legislation that was being passed through the Commons where they voted against... Where they, the Tories voted against a Lord's Amendment that would stop this kind of shit. But they are in the pockets of all of the big companies that are the private companies that are in, in charge of the water system and in charge of, like, of this, you know, this, again, this utility which has a inelastic demand. So like, you need to drink water. You can't just go without it. Everyone needs water. So putting it in the hands of private companies is ridiculous. And, like, not they're all they're all just as bad as each other. Like United Utilities, Trent Water, Thames Valley Water, they're all fucking they're all absolute garbage. Exactly. Tragedy of the Commons, one hundred percent. Like you you socialise the gains, uh and sorry no, so you, you socialise the losses and you privatise the gains. Exactly. Hundred percent. You're absolutely right. And it's like and clearly people were absolutely outraged by this. Which was good. I'm glad people were outraged by something like. like, like let me just have a look at some. There were some other clips here. Uh, mm -mm -mm. Let's have a look here. Like 104 days after we fined 90 million for dumping sewage into the environment, and less than 12 hours after government voted to protect water companies, not our rivers, Southern Water were dumping sewage at 60 different locations across the southeast coast of England. Absolutely fucking crazy. Like, look at these maps as well here. Um, let me have a look at yeah pictures of actual sewage. This is this is yes the literal river full of sewage. How fucking grotesque is this? Like what country does this to itself? I I what this is I'm gonna be sick. It's horrendous. Absolutely crazy. I'm glad people are calling out their individual MPs for voting for this as well. Like, I'm glad. I'm very glad that we got the 
we got the drink shit government. The drink shit, uh, let the bodies pile high fuck business government. I'm glad we got that government. Uh, and we didn't get the tax the rich, free broadband, um, public pro public services government. I'm glad we do I'm glad we got that one. I'm glad we got the bodies pile high one. The no more fucking lockdowns party. I'm glad we got that one. That was clearly a good choice that we made. Because you know what? I'm going to go home and then drink my glass full of shit. Because that is what I deserve. Um, I don't even know who my MP is. I literally just moved. Let me check. Actually, I'm not going to check because that would be technically doxing myself, sort of. I'm in Broxtow. Which I've just done. I've just doxed myself anyway. I forget who my MP for Broxtow is. I think he's a bellend. I think he's a Tory. Is it the swing seat? Oh yeah, because they were they were doing free broadband trials for people on low incomes. Like it costs you more to it, it costs more to means test these programs anyway. Just have it's a it's a it's a utility that everyone has everyone needs access to. You can't fucking you can't you live like exist in the world without the internet. Anymore. You can't apply for jobs without the internet. Like who like it, it's it's such a like obvious thing to do to. Because uh, the the market also fails. This is another instance of market failure. The broadband economy, complete. Because what they've done is, they've just sectioned off parts of the country to different providers, and there's no competition because they've all got this like unwritten agreement that you don't step on each other's turf, apart from in like big cities or whatever. Like there was places where we used to, I used to, we were living up north where you used to just plus net or nothing. You had to get plus net, and it was fucking garbage like when, I, when we first had like an adsl connection in my parents house we well, first had broadband it was just ntl or nothing and it was shit it was awful because they have no in they have no incentive to make their service any better because they have a, they have like a natural monopoly like you can't have startups in the broadband sector because the ba the, the barrier of cost for entry is so fucking high like Yeah, means testing programs put money in cronies' pockets. Like this, like the money's going to go into their pockets anyway if you don't means test it. So why bother means testing it? Just make it easy, just make it very simple and cheaper, just to put give money to people. Like does make any sense? Uh, Darren Henry is my MP. Wonder how he voted. Darren Heron. Aaron Darren Henry, um, recent votes. Well, he voted yes on all of the original bill, so one can only shit one. We can only assume that he has not been in support of that. So yeah, my MP is also a bell end. But even so, like the fact that we live in a country where they're just like, yeah, it's fine, I'm just gonna pump shit into the water, or they just until there was a public outcry, they was like, oh, maybe we won't do that. Imagine if we had enough public outcry about everything. Imagine if we were this incensed about the um, national insurance increase, which only affects working poor people, like just taxing working poor people rather than taxing the wealthy. Like crazy, absolutely. <laughs> it's just, like who? What? I just I don't get this government. I just don't get that they just seem to be completely fucking reckless and not even bother, not even not even get not even care about anything. They have a strategy. They don't seem to mind or even bother wanting to have policy that makes them. They just throw shit at the walls, literally, or shit and, and, and on the walls or at the walls, and just see what sticks. Or if somebody doesn't like it, we'll stop. Like, what's going on? Who? What kind of monkeys have we put in charge? Yeah, like even even actual Tory voters said this was bad. I, I saw someone tweeting around on Twitter the other day, which generally just taps into the Tory mindset in in like in in like a nutshell, where the whole way through the pandemic they were saying, "Oh, Boris is great, clap for carers, all that kind of all of the the talking point bollocks about what Boris Johnson was doing during the pandemic. Thought he's doing an amazing job. Oh, he's trying his best. And then as soon as they they said the national insurance raise was going, it's like, no, I hate the Tories now because they finally did something that affects me personally and directly because they just have no. Like, like you have to explain to these people that po governmental policy extends beyond your tiny little bubble and affects people other than yourself. Like it's just that's just the Tory mindset. Crazy to me.
By all means, Mr. Wireless, post the link by, by all means. The last thing that I was going to have, a, that I was going to talk about, is the very normal part of the world that we live in. Uh, where people are raking in by bringing in extra money by having a second job. In this Sun article, ti literally titled, Raking It In, I shit you not. Uh, one in four Brits have taken to boosting their earnings with a second income stream, bringing in extra money each month. And then literally the very first paragraph of this article that's supposed to be about savvy savers getting extra money and raking it in is 58% of these people surveyed need it to make ends meet. We literally live in a country where people cannot make ends meet because they don't earn enough in their first job. People have to take two jobs. Remember when there was an article going around about, oh, millennials are embracing polyworking by having multiple jobs. It's, no, we're really fucking poor. We have to work too to be able to pay the bills. I literally could not afford to live the life I live if I had kids, if I had a dependent, because I literally didn't make enough money to have my own personal subsistence subsistence as a single child free person right i can't imagine what it's like for someone who has fucking kids like i say well if you can't afford kids you shouldn't have them well, like the problem is is people cannot afford to have kids we live in a world in which we literally cannot we live in a world where people just genuinely working people literally cannot are so poor they can't afford to have something as incredibly basic as procreate or own a house, right? I do not think this is a normal position to be in where, where you know, regular people can't afford to buy a house or have a family. We should be living in a society where the very basic things that somebody should be able to afford is having a house and a family, and they can't do either of these things uh, without working two fucking jobs. So it's crazy to me. Like, the way in which, like, they, there's this... this, this um, manufactured consent amongst people amongst like the media class where literally anybody who's not doing well we we pathologize it anyone who's not like this fucking sigma grind set you know above the median wage there must be some moral deficiency they've engaged in because at the end of the day people who work people who do the jobs they keep our society going like a year ago these are fucking essential key workers and now they're scroungers who if they can't afford to have a kid why they shouldn't get pregnant right get a second job spend your entire life like slaving away for the bourgeois like fuck these people honestly fuck this fucking country when this is the like the paradigm that people have just accepted like i saw an article about a woman who was, like, it just, it just fucking blackpilled me on people in this country, where the article is about a woman who is in a council flat. She has three kids and a partner. It's a one-bedroom council flat. One of the kids is severely ADHD, so he needs the one bedroom to himself, otherwise he will never sleep. The rest of the family sleeps on their sofa bed as a family all together because she can't train to get a job because... She has to go to bed at eight every night because they have to turn the lights off for the other kids to go to sleep in the single room that they all sleep in. Like, and then people in the comments, they just fucking no compassion, no understanding of like the condition that this person is forced to live in because the council won't move her onto a place because there's no council houses because the waiting list is like fucking hundreds of people long because all the fucking council housing got sold off by fucking Thatcher. Uh, and then all these people in the comments were just treating her like fucking shit. Just like treating as though she's just some kind of like this morally deficient person who is entirely those circumstances that are entirely her own fault. I felt like, I felt horrible reading the article, and these people just like just like hearts are like black as fucking soot, going, "Yeah, no, don't care. Your own fault. You, 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 and your entire family can suffer." Like the kids didn't choose to live in that household, even if you are taking it from the point of view that somehow this woman deserves to be in the position that she's in for what she's been engaging in the life that she's led that doesn't mean that kids deserve to live in squalor either like they they like these kids don't have any they don't have any choice to live there or not it's people are fucking sociopathic and it's not their own fault either it's again it's the cult it's cultural hegemony it's a manufactured consent of the media class who continue spewing this narrative to onto fuel right-wing sentiment um because you know if anybody you know had i don't know 
hate to be all no justice about this, but if they took any kind of, I don't know, material analysis of the situation, they might understand what the, you know, the larger structures that surround this, because again, everything is atomized, everything is individualized, we can't think of broader societal trends, it's just individual people making individual actions, it's neoliberalism in a fucking nutshell. Uh, the rest of this article, when you look at it, um, Well, having a secondary income is increasingly common and astonishing two thirds of people that think it's either the norm or soon will be. Fuck, that's that's not normal. That's not that's not a functioning society that to, that where we have where we have to have two incomes is the norm. Like technically, me being on Twitch is technically a secondary kind of income, but I don't make enough for it to care. I do this because I enjoy it, and if I make some money off it, then whatever, fine. It's not a dent in my actual salary. Um, but people are doing this because they have to. <laughs> We've seen the rise of second income first hand with growing interest on our partner opportunity, as well as more post pandemic Brits are seeking work they can fit into the nooks and crannies of their out lives outside of nine to five and that can be done from anywhere. They literally at the top of the article, it's been fifty eight percent doing it because they have to make ends meet. They're forced into doing it. It's not some it's not some cool lifestyle choice they've just decided to get involved in because they're on the Sigma grind set. They're so poor they have to take multiple jobs to be able to survive. With the cost of living set to continue rising, it's no wonder we're seeing more people look at alternative ways to earn. Whether it's additional income on top of the main job or taking a more flexible approach to earning, resourceful Brits are reinventing the single traditional job world to make working life better work for them. No, it's working worse. If you're having to work more hours, that's worse. Like, com like that's just bad. <laughs> like, what you said, you've even, you've included the issue in the fucking article, the cost of living is going up. Okay, then increase the fucking pay. Not an extra 60p up to £9.50. £15 a fucking hour. Make work pay. If work, work needs to be done. Like, when they said these people are key workers, these people are essential workers, they weren't fucking wrong. These people, people who were, you know, shelf stacking Tesco, they perform an incredibly essential service. So, you know, the people of us who eat food and buy groceries, which is namely the entire fucking population of the UK. There needs to be food on the shelves in Tesco for people to go and buy it. So these people are essential. If the job they do is essential, it needs to be able to pay for them to be to be able to exist. And that's why people say, oh, well, employment, unemployment's, unemployment's gone. People, the number of people in employment has gone. That's because people are working multiple jobs to make ends meet. Or don't increase national insurance, true. Or you will stratify it further based upon income. And don't... and it remove the burden from the lowest earners and put it more onto higher earners. That's what I'd be happy, happy with. Increase capital gains tax, which still isn't fucking high enough because that's how rich people make their money. Like they, we pay a bigger percentage in tax being people who work for a living, members of the proletariat, than bourgeois interests who make money off capital, who make money off capital gains. Which is why I really like Biden's plan for a um, tax on unrealized capital gains. Because that would force people to engage with the market to generate rep to generate um, actual stuff rather than just making money off you know transactions. Absolutely, progressive taxes only. Like like the increase in national insurance is just another fucking it's just a poll tax. It's just a poll tax at this point. We rioted about the poll tax in the fucking eighties, and people just kind of mutely accept it nowadays. There's just this normalization that the government is here to screw our lives over. It's to screw working people over, and people just fucking accept it. No. Don't fucking accept it. This isn't normal. This isn't correct. This isn't good. This doesn't make for a society that is coherent and cogent and f well functioning. Why do you think there's loads of civil unrest and why do you think people are angry? Why are there protests? Because people are unhappy. Like, when was the, when was the last time you saw like a riot during a Labour government? I don't remember. There's plenty of riots all through the Tory administration where people were being made destitute, where people were being where people are being emaciated by lack of benefits because of, you know, the ATOS miracles. Like, maybe crime would go down if people ha were better off. Poverty and crime are very closely correlated. It's not particularly di it's not particularly difficult to understand that if you give people a base level of subsistence living, they're more, they're less likely to turn towards crime. Like, doesn't make just take a genius to work out and the data would support that too so it's just a shame that we have abandoned the social democratic consensus towards uh, the neoliberal um 
post Thatcherite consensus, where everyone is just it. We do, there's no systems, there's no superstructure. Like it's all it's just there to disabuse people of a kind of Marxist analysis of the world. Hey ho! So that was a very normal Britain that we have today. Um, and if you th agree with me that this isn't normal, this isn't the way the country should be run, this isn't how any country should be run, uh, and these things should change, uh, then you should subscribe to me on YouTube and follow me on Twitch uh, and like the video when I post this on YouTube at, uh, after the facts with the cool thumbnail. Uh, and I will see, and I will be doing another uh, normal normal island segment next Wednesday at 8pm as we usually would as we have done today